Evening Standard Rugby Podcast with Lawrence Delalio. Hello and welcome to the Evening Standard Rugby Podcast. I'm Lawrence Delalio, and joining me this week uh, is the Evening Standard, Steve Cording. Steve, uh, nice for me to be back again. Um, sat on something a little bit more com- <laughs> comfortable, With, I will without, say. Yes, hello, Lawrence. Without being uh, um, too graphic, how is your um, uh, bottom half, shall oh, we say? A little bit well, sore? A little bit sore, uh, all over, actually. I... Um, I've just taken part in the Delalio Cycle Slam well for done. Rugby Works, my charity, uh, along with a number of other, um, you know, similarly uh, uh, determined riders. We we cycled from Rome to Nice, um, about a hundred miles, one hundred and fifty kilometres a day, mm. two thousand metres of climbing a day uh, in ten days. And uh, I have to say that my um, preparation of two peloton classes uh, <laughs> up between uh, since Christmas was was definitely uh, underprepared. So, um, yeah, yeah I, I suffered enormously, but uh, I guess that's part of the deal. We raised uh, over £300,000 wow. and counting. Well done. Um, people can still visit the link to just giving Lawrence to Lalio. Yeah, we'll, uh, put that, we'll put that in the programme. Yeah, it was, uh, it was an uh, awesome experience. It's the seventh uh, cycle slam that I've taken part in. I've done mm. them every two years. Um, I love the the idea of going from Rome to Nice. Was that the first one you've done in Italy? Yeah, no, we've been in parts of Italy before. Um, the, sea, mean, the scenery looks yeah, it was incredible. I mean, it, you know, it looks like we're having a great time on the on the on the social clips, but I can tell yeah, you, yeah. it was pain and suffering. The um, you know, there's there's ten days of cycling. Uh, it's a long way. You're roughly in the saddle for six or seven hours. And we finished in Siena up the Strada Bianchi, which is where they finished the main mm. race. Um, we took part in the San Remo Nice kind of a section of the Tour de France for the, for, for for this year. So, you know, it had a it, it had its moments where it was incredibly tough. Sun shining, we had torrential rain. Any, anything and everything that can happen on a bike happened to us. <laughs> Uh, but thankfully, uh, we all got round and home safe and sound. And then I went straight into. Uh, three yeah. matches. I was going to uh, say, nice, the, nice weekend off for you. I had no. a triple header, <laughs> triple header because uh, I'd taken two weekends off um, and uh, I had to put a bit back. So I was straight down to Bath to watch Saracens flex their champions muscles and, mm. and, and overtake Bath into um, second place. Did you stay awake? It was uh, a bit dull in the first half, wasn't it? It was a little bit dull. It was a bit of a kick yeah. fest. Then on Sunday, I was down at Gloucester Exeter but the game that I probably enjoyed the most was um, the big summer mm. kickoff. Harlequins, 65,000, whatever it was, at Twickenham against Northampton Saints. And um, that is beautifully segue to our beautifully. special guest. Uh, let us introduce the one and only Northampton Saints and England superstar, Tommy Freeman. Well, joining us uh, as our special guest this week is Northampton and England back, Tommy Freeman. Tommy... Um, well, hello first. How are you? Battered and bruised. Very good, Battered thank and you. bruised for having me. after uh, uh, the big summer kickoff. Does it feel like a big summer kickoff? Yeah, yeah, it did. To be fair, um, yeah, Twickenham was rocking. To be fair to them, um, but no, it was a it was a good game. Um, unlucky with the result, but um, no, came away unscathed. Given that you're top of the table, it was always going to be an entertaining game with Quinns because you both like to uh, have a go, as they say. Um, it's. Uh, I mean, what was the frustrations? Was it, you know that you didn't take advantage of the the lack of discipline that Quinns had, or you just seemed to? Because defensively this season you've been very strong, haven't you? Yeah, I think I think there was a. We we obviously reviewed it today, and there was a there was a few discussions. Um, but ultimately, I don't think we we kind of turned up and got our game on the park as as quickly as we'd have liked. Um, there was a lot of handling errors from our end um, that kind of denied denied some points when we got into their half. Um, but yeah, like you said, they obviously went down twice, um, and we probably didn't didn't take um, didn't take that as as much as we could. Um, it's a bit cruel, no, wasn't it? A bit cruel at the end of the game to lose the uh, the losing bonus point as well. I kind of felt like. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm not going to moan about it, but I felt like it was a few decisions that didn't seem to go your way, really. Yeah, and that happens. I mean, there's probably some decisions that have gone our way in the past, so it's just rugby, isn't it? Um, yeah. can't, can't blame him too much. But um, no, it was it it was a it was a it was a obviously a tough game, um, and and obviously to come away on the back end of a, of a loss was, wasn't the best. But um, in terms of like you said, for a, for a crowd's point of view, to have two. Um, attacking attacking styles of play going at each other must have been must have been real good. Uh, one decision, Tommy, that's come under scrutiny, and Lawrence talked about it yesterday, was um, 
Danny Cares, uh, yellow or non-yellow, shall we say? Um, I, yep. bet, I bet that was an interesting review. In the uh, well, listen, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna spare your blushes. Uh, it was definitely a yellow card. Yeah. Okay. And it, it, after a line break, not because he dived over the ruck, um, because actually I think he got that bit right, but mm. he actually pushed John Ram in the back and uh, didn't allow him to uh, to get to the breakdown. And as a perpetrator of many a cynical uh, uh, killing of the ball, I can, tell you, I can tell you for a fact. But the other thing that's quite surprising, Daddy Care holds the record for the most yellow cards in the Premiership. Does he? Yeah, really does. absolutely. I mean, he, he's, he's, he's left me you know, way behind in terms of uh, yellow cards. I think he's, uh, he's got 18 yeah. uh, in total. And uh, listen, he was fortunate. Um, I, the, the bigger question is, and this is not for Tommy to decide, but when you when Carl Dixon, who is a top class referee, international standard referee, probably one of our best, mm. um, but uh, no one's questioning his integrity or his bias because he he hasn't got bias. But when when you've played with Danny Kerr and many of the Quinns team, um, it does open you up for a bit of scrutiny when there is a controversial decision. And as you know, in football. There is absolutely no way that anyone who played uh, at any mm. club would mm. be allowed to referee a, g- a game against their club. So I think if there's any learning from big summer kickoff, I, I don't think he should be refereeing no. games against did, Harlequin. Did you, did you message DC afterwards, Tommy, and say, I think you got away with one there? Yeah? <laughs> no, but I remember when he when he came off, because he got subbed for, for Will, um, and, w- and when he came off, he, he gave me a little smile walking past. So I think he knew exactly what he has done. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I was pretty yeah. lucky to get away with that. I mean, you've kind of been on the edge of the playoffs. You, you've been there or thereabouts. Did you set yeah. yourself targets at the beginning of the season? Was it to to, to go that little bit further and, and, and make sure that you, um, you know, because it feels like you've got a team that could actually now challenge on not just, you know, domestic rugby, but, but also European front as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, we had a we we headed down to Bicester and had a kind of a talk as players. Um, I'm not part of the leadership group, but um, the leadership group kind of definitely made a point of 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 us players taking control, um, us kind of leading from the front, and and obviously having the coaches around us to aid that um, was was a big point. But no, I think obviously defence Radders coming in, um, showing us a different kind of aspect and way of of thinking about defence. Um, it, it, it's probably defense is probably one of those hard ones where it's not too dissimilar at each club, um, but it's kind of all about connections. I'd say massively in in Radis's defense, um, and and obviously just wanting to hit people. Um, and I think that maybe have lacked um, over the over a few years. But no, he, he's definitely kind of got a got our hearts on our sleeves when we when we want to defend and and we're defending for each other. So so Tommy, uh, eight caps for England. Uh, how many caps have you got to have to break into the leadership group? Um, <laughs> the leadership. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, obviously you've got a bit of catching up with Courtney. It, listen, it's been an unbelievable um, you know breakthrough for you. Um, you know, I think you were uh, you know I don't want to um, make you blush, but you were one of the outstanding players in the Six Nations Championship. Um, and what, what, what's that whole experience been like? Do you feel like um, playing at Northampton has prepared you? really well for international rugby or did you did you really notice the step up when you suddenly in that in that squad and in that environment yeah i think i think obviously northampton's the is where you get picked that's where you've got to play well to get picked so no in in terms of that i think they have massively helped um and then probably being being in and out of camps uh, over the last 3 years or so has probably kind of got me ready and kind of changed my the way i think each time um obviously under eddie was was obviously a bit of a different um, style of play um, and kind of what he likes, and you have to kind of do what he likes to to get picked. And this Tom same Bowler Steve, selection, really. yeah, I know, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's the same with Steve. It's I mean, I knew my high balls um, wasn't probably up to scratch as it as it could be, and I think that Steve made that pretty clear. And obviously, the way England's played and the way we play um, is is going after more, more aerial stuff. Um, it was definitely something I had to work on. Um, and then once I kind of got that up to up to scratch, I was then given my shot. So um, yeah, and then everything kind of took care of itself. So you've played uh, left wing, right wing for England. You have played centre on Saturday. You use number fifteen yeah. on social media. Uh, yeah. <laughs> where where would you like to play? Where's your preferred position? Oh, it's a tough question. Um, I think there's obviously if I was to choose one, I think thirteen you get a lot more ball, 
Um, not in not in as much space, um, but you definitely get a lot more balls. So. Hard, hardest position on the field to defend, though, Tommy. You know that it is, you? it is, and that is something I'm 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 still kind of hacking at. Um, and there's there's still definitely elements of that I've, yeah. I've got to improve to to kind of play there, especially at an international level standard. Um, but no, obviously the wing I've I've had a lot of joy there as well, popping up in places, um, kind of roaming around more so than getting connected off things. Um, so yeah, I'd I'd say there's a mixture a mixture of a lot of positions. Obviously, I think I've said it in a in a few interviews about having that means you're going to probably be the 23 and and yeah, the yeah, guy yeah. that can play them all. Um, but but no, I'm just trying to trying to be the best yeah, in each position. Just ask Austin Healy that. Honest. Ask Austin Healy that. He's, you want to, you want to nail one down? Really, he played but, in uh, every position. Didn't you? Now, have you have you got a, a pack of cards nearby? I've seen you I do. Doing, you, I've seen you doing some magic tricks on Instagram. You got a fresh pack. There we go. So is that is that is that something that you do a lot of? A bit, a bit, no, bit not of, bit of card tricks. Listen, Can you show listen, us one now? Or we, not? we used to play. We used to play three card brag. I mean, I remember that much with uh, yeah. with the very little amount of money that we earned playing for England. Um, well, it was the one you did that I saw that you did for the England boys it was very impressive is it yeah I take it you know more than one trick yeah there's a few um yeah it's, got, it's quite hard over camera I mean I could probably show you the same one come on but, Tommy um, you got a bit of dy- oh, dynamo sure. about you come on I don't think we've ever had a card trick on the pod before have we <laughs> okay uh, you just say stop right all right stop okay hang on hang on where is it there you go oh stop stop yeah nice I'll pull your card out have a look at lovely. it lovely yeah got yeah, that, got that. Yeah. Right, yeah right Put it on top, I think, yeah. All right, I'm going to give it a few more cuts. I've got to get this right now. Eight caps and you're in the magic circle already. I can't <laughs> believe it. Yeah. Yeah, this, right. is very, this is seriously impressive. It's good, isn't it? Jack of hearts and jack of diamonds. Hopefully your card isn't one of those. Nope. That's good. Um, shall we find it? Oh, don't get this wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Right. You, you, you can have two goes if you get it wrong. Don't worry. Right. We'll, 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 we'll cut, edit, we'll cut edit it out. the other one. We only, cool. we only right. like superstars right. on our team. Here we go. So, so Jack of Hearts on the top. Yeah. Jack of Diamonds on the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Jack of Hearts on the top. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to stand up for this bit because you can oh. see the hand. Right, hang on. All right. So Jack of Hearts. Yeah. Jack of Diamonds. Oh. One card jumps in. Turn it oh, over. One. That hey. one. Very oh, impressive. Thank God for that. And that's magic, Tommy. There's a bit of pressure <laughs> on that. <laughs> well done, you. Under he- pressure as well. Clearly could cope. Listen, this happens at every club, but it's the end of an era. There's some big characters uh, of the Northampton Saints leaving your club at the end of the season. You're you're alive in two competitions. Um, obviously, you know the likes of Courtney and and. and and, and the Waller uh, boys and et cetera, et cetera. Um, do, does it feel like this is probably what the best chance you've 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 had in a long time of, of actually claiming, you know, some sort of silverware? Yeah, definitely. Um, and that and that's kind of mentioned throughout these weeks. Obviously, the the big summer kickoff that could be the last obviously time they they play at Twickenham. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of headlined going into the week. Um, but yeah, I mean these. Yeah, the likes of Courts, Alex Waller, Ethan Waller. These these lads have been around the club for years, and obviously Alex Waller's um, kind of records. He's he's carrying on breaking yeah. playing each week. He's got hundreds. Um, it, and and for him to obviously have been in finals previously and to share his experience of of what we're going into, and and obviously him getting that winner in the final as well it, it is awesome. Kind of to be a part of of his journey. Um, and obviously the legend courts um, on on what he's done in his career, I mean, is really cool. So, no, having those having those players, yeah, it's gonna uh, we're gonna miss them for sure. Um, but yeah, like you said, um, it, they've obviously helped us put us in this position, and and then hopefully they they'll, they'll have definitely left left the club in a better place to for us for us youngsters to to keep pursuing and, and carrying on. Tommy, quick name check for the family. You must, your, your parents must be very proud. I know mine certainly were. And any, any player who gets to represent his club and his country, are they? Um, I mean, my mum and dad. My dad was Italian. My mum was, were, you know, didn't really understand anything about rugby. But they, by the time, by the time they came to watch me, they, they knew everything. So are they? Are they right in behind you? Do, you? do your extended family come to every game and 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 follow you around the Six Nations as well? Oh yeah, big time. Uh, yeah, they didn't miss a Six Nations game. Uh, mum and dad are mum and dad are proper supporters. They uh, 
drove me around as a youngster, literally everywhere, um, up and down, did miles and miles. Um, came, they came out to Australia. Um, but yeah, mum's mum's the, the biggest critic, I'd say. God, I get a full debrief <laughs> after every she, game from She mom. doesn't march up to the coaches after the game and start giving oh, them hope, hope, I hope not. <laughs> I wouldn't play each week if she did. I think, I think they used to avoid my mum. Do you think Do you think if you were lucky enough to get picked on the England tour to New Zealand, would they make the trip out there, do you reckon? Potentially, yeah. I think they're probably... Well, you, might stump, you might to, <laughs> dig into your deep pockets and, uh, and pay their airfare like I did. Hey. I think, yeah, I think I think that's that's what would be asked for sure. Oh, brilliant. Well, hopefully your mum sorted out your shorts, hasn't she? I mean, that must have left her a little bit red-faced. Did it in Rome or not? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think they saw it until afterwards when they watched it on TV. Uh, but, um, brilliant. Some, yeah, definitely. Some I remember it. That was so bad. I couldn't even... I remember being on the floor trying to pull them up and I still couldn't. I was, like, I can't stand up. <laughs> I was on the floor for about five minutes trying to pull them up afterwards. Brilliant. It must be quite a skill that to pull somebody because you must wear what you must have shorts. You've got shorts underneath and, oh, listen, and trunks on as well. You don't, you don't even think you don't even think about that kind of thing, really. It's, you must have had your uh, pants no, pulled down a, a few times. Layers, I've there. had plenty of <laughs> steps on. Trust me, <laughs> <laughs> plenty. It's the worst injury I ever had, really. To be fair, um, uh, Tommy, you're, you're obviously got you know you're going over to uh, to Dublin. Uh, when will you guys head over? I think we're going on Friday. Okay. Um, early morning and then we'll we'll probably head to the ground have a little look at it um team run and then fly in on saturday well li- listen i know it's a, it's obviously a massive game for for you for the club for the fans um you know you've been involved in test weeks this will be a, a similar sort of feeling we wish you all the very best really appreciate you joining us you, you are the first magic trick we've ever had on the, on, <laughs> yeah. on the pod so uh, well done to you and uh, we look forward to it. and good luck at the weekend we, look, we we hope you go well yeah good luck cheers thanks very much guys thanks for having me now, Lawrence, you were clearly struggling with your voice, but you've been on a, a cycle slam and three days working for TNT. I'm hoping, though, that England captain Marley Packer, who is joining us now, is similarly struggling. Uh, Two-day hangover, Marley? Um, yeah, a little bit. To be fair, it's more just tiredness. We had a ridiculous flight time where quite a few of the players didn't get to bed, so um, it's more tiredness than hangover. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, congratulations on claiming your third Grand Slam in a row. Uh, fantastic. We were all delighted to see that. Listen, it was it was a superb uh, tournament for, for the Red Roses. Um, your consistency uh, across all the performances. But to go away from home against probably the, the most competitive team that you, you play, France, um, to sort of silence the crowd and to do it quite comprehensively in the end must have been very satisfying for you and the team. Yeah, really satisfying. I think as well, uh, the bit about silence in the crowd was massive. But also with that, I think the last three or four French games we've played, um, the result hasn't been much more than five to ten points difference, whereas there was a big margin in this game. And I think that just shows uh, where we are as the Red Roses and where we where we plan to take our, our game. I, uh, I saw somewhere on social media a picture of John Mitchell standing up. Was he was he necking a pint of beer or something? He was very emotional at the end. It's obviously his first season as your new head coach of, of the Red Roses. Um, clearly, he's mixed things up a bit in terms of selection. Um, none of us ever like being put on the bench. I'm sure you're the same as well, regardless. Um, but clearly, it, whatever whatever he's done, it's really worked, isn't it? Because it, it kind of brought everything to a boil for, for the game that really mattered. And you produced probably your best best performance of the tournament. Yeah, definitely. I think we talk about uh, letting off the handbrake as, as the squad and he, he showed us a video of his granddaughter at the beginning of Six Nations. I think it was like 45 days. Um, and then his granddaughter comes sliding in on a go-kart and like letting the handbrake off and down. And he basically said to us, that's, that's what he wants us to do over this next 45 <laughs> days, but enjoy yeah. it with a smile on our face. And then, you know, to get the result like we did, but for him, I think coaching us as the Red Roses has opened his eyes to to probably a little bit different in in the men's game, and I think he's yeah. really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I think he he knows we've got even more levels to go up, um, and yeah, just really looking forward to the John Mitchell era. Really, I think it's well and truly started, and yeah, twenty twenty five is just in just in the horizon for us. Has Oliver got a handbrake on his go-kart? Uh, no, not at the moment. He's more into... He's got a little JTB digger, to be fair, there. He's got a tipper, <laughs> so he lets that off. <laughs> so coming next, you've got uh, 
New Zealand in the autumn before you go off to WXV uh, one. Uh, how much are you looking forward and do you think you can sell out Twickenham before you go away? Yeah, I generally believe we can sell out Twickenham before we go away. Um, <clears throat> with that, it would be a massive occasion. Uh, we don't play New Zealand on our home ground, like our home soil that often. So to do it at Twickenham, in the way we put the performance in against Ireland and, and the crowd behind us, I think like looking forward to that will, will be massive for us. But also I think we're playing France as well. So it'd be two really big tests going into WXV and to just show where we really are like there's a lot of rugby to be played from now till then uh we all go back to our PWR clubs next week um and it's a tough back end of the season for a lot of teams so then coming back off our break and going straight into pre-season for WXV is yeah it's going to be a tough one now we're in association with QBE business insurance we're looking at how we grow the game uh, Marley what's the one thing that you would like to see happen for next year's uh, women's Six Nations to help raise, raise the profile even higher in the women's game? I think just in the lead up to it, uh, next year's Six Nations will also be building into 2025. So the stadiums where we're deciding to play our games, actually let's make sure that they're, they're in big enough stadiums for to get crowds in. But when we go on the road, they're, they're places where we can get more Red Roses fans to the games at reasonable price tickets because I think, you know, it's a great day out and if we can get more people there, they're going to keep coming back because it's a great game to watch. It is. You can't say it, but I'll say it. If Bill Sweeney is listening, please don't change the ticket pricing for the women's game. Uh, he was indicating today that perhaps they're a little bit too yeah. cheap. But well, I think you, you can change it for why. the men's game, Bill, because they're a little bit too expensive. They're Let too me expensive. tell you that now. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Brilliant for you to have joined us for the entire Women's Six Nations. Uh, really thank you for coming on and giving us your insights, educating us. Uh, and also, uh, as you know, I, I went to a game and thoroughly enjoyed it. So it's been a, a real pleasure to have you on. And we look forward to catching up with you again very, very soon. Uh, but again, fantastic. Congratulations on uh, winning the Women's Six Nations. Thank you very much and thank you for having me. Uh, thanks, everyone, for this week. My special thanks go to Steve, to Nick, and our guests, Tommy Freeman and Marley Packer. And, of course, our hosts here, Vox Pod Studios. But we'll be back next week. But until then, thanks for listening and goodbye.